be. Now, for many business owners, the ongoing drive to be successful makes it incredibly hard to actually take a step back. John Sikama knows this all too well. While working just about 80 hours a week, he suffered from burnout and nearly lost it all, business, wife and family. It forced him to reflect on what success really was and it made him realise the importance of having a passion outside of work to tell us all. Hi John, welcome to the program. Hi Heidi. So, you got burned, you burnt out? Yes. Was it you that identified it? Or did someone else tell you? Well, I have to admit that someone else identified it and uh, it was my wife, yeah. So what were the symptoms? What was happening for you? Well, I was basically working 80 plus hours a week and um, I've always wanted to be in business. So it was my dream growing up uh, and uh, my grandparents were in business, so were my parents. And um, so I went at the whole business thing pretty hard and, and uh, was quite keen to get out of school. And uh, probably age 23, I went into my own business and by age 26, I was in selling financial planning or insurance superannuation, a bit of tax planning and I'd been very successful at that and then I moved um, into the financial planning industry and built a business with, uh, became CEO, largest shareholder and um, had about 50 staff and uh, had the dream house, the architect home overlooking a beach golf course, had a beach house, had the BM what, jogging. You for happy? Jog I, I was happy, um, but um, the problem was I started getting migraine headaches and going home a couple of nights a week and going straight to bed and not eating with the family. Then we had the recession we had to have, the Paul Keating, and uh, we were losing twenty-five dollars to $30,000 a month. So I had health issues, financial issues, and then relationally I'd neglected my family somewhat due to this lifestyle and the pressure of building this business and then with the recession. So that put me in a position that my wife said, John, you're not the fun guy I married. Um, Where are and, you? Yeah, and uh, you're basically a workaholic and, and you're often not well and you can't spend time with the family or me. It's an interesting concept though, once things go a little bit pear-shaped financially, that that really adds a much, you know, a huge amount of stress. Yeah. Without that, would you have still had the burnout? Um, I think maybe not quite as bad because that finance, but finance is a stress that most small business people have. So, Certainly. And you can be travelling quite well, but there's so much competition in one thing or another. But uh, yeah, finance uh, certainly um, is, is a big factor. But still, I think we were growing apart because I actually enjoyed the adrenaline rush of building and growing a business. And we're in Tasmania and I wanted to build it across Australia. And so my ambition um, was probably also a contributing factor. So do you think that burnout is just you or you think this happens across the board for, for lots of people and we just are blind to it? I think if you're a type A person and, and if you're a driven person, an ambitious person, I think it's a tendency you will have because one of the things I've discovered and, and that was a changing point for me was um, a lot of us aim to have life balance. The problem is without being sexist here, a lot of women like their men to have life balance, but we're wired for adventure and challenge and we don't necessarily want to have life balance. Um, and what I found the answer for me was really finding a purpose that was greater than the vision I had for the business outside of work and that brought it into perspective. You were in a good position in that you had you were very financially sound and had the opportunity didn't you to sort of step outside the business and go and pursue a passion outside does that is that an option for everybody though well i wouldn't say that was true for me at the point when i had what i call a defining moment when i and also had a car accident, a wake up call all at that time. I had a lot of debt and the business had a lot of debt. So in my case, I think the financial side of it uh, forced me, um, but the catalyst was my wife saying, uh, well, if you don't change, I want a divorce and we're running off to marriage counselling. And my view was, I'm not sure I need this, but I'll, I'll do it to help her, which is fairly typically male. So I was fairly didn't have the self-awareness. Um, so unfortunately a lot of people need um, a health issue or a relational issue or a finance issue or, or a death or a cancer or something like that to stop them and make them think maybe I should be reprioritising or looking at things differently. Is your journey now to help people to get those insights well before those 
defining moment so that you know if we can get smart about taking some time out finding a passion outside of work well before we're sort of crippled <laughs> by exactly work, yeah. that's the optimal result yeah well I was really blessed after I had that defining moment which to me was a bit of a spiritual experience I actually was hearing someone speak one day and they said if I could find a hundred people that could give me a million dollars each we could change this nation and my heart leapt and I recalled a dream I had when I was 14 and uh, that once I grew to once I was age 50 I wanted to dedicate my life to helping others but between now and then I just want to work and earn money but I must admit I forgot about that from age 14 till about 40 and that ignited an old dream that I had and not long after that I heard virtually an audible voice saying John I did not create you for you to be successful I created you to help others succeed and if you do that you'll be truly successful that, that, so that was very a, concise that was very concise <laughs> and that was a head that heart message. that was a head heart thing and within an hour I'd raced home and written down 13 things I wanted to change in my life so that was folk and I, I found my purpose John, in that about, moment. What about for people who feel very passionate about their work and really enjoy it yes they you know they spend a lot of hours at work but they enjoy it and they get a lot of reward and satisfaction yes. that's passion but at the same time you can obviously drive yourself into the ground if you're not careful about creating some balance. That's right, and that's why today, what I, once I sold the business, because the business grew dramatically after that defining moment, even though I cut my hours back from 80 to 50. And so what I uh, do today is help people coach to develop a purpose outside of their work, which is really a vision for your life. Now, shouldn't a vision for your life well, be more good. important than a vision for your business? Bis vision for the business is really important, but moving the vision of your business from here to here and putting the vision of your life there okay. and helping the fuel of your business fuel your life vision. So top tips, let's just say I'm a stressed executive, Yes. how do I find this balance? Well I would say that probably one of the things to do is look for a mentor and a coach. Look for someone who's ahead of you on the journey that you admire and aspire to and just be as determined to find that person as you are to succeed in business. So it means you might have to turn over a few people but the turning point I found a couple of people who I admired that shared my values that actually helped me sit down and plan and, and just develop a plan for my life in the same way as I had for my business. And by having that mentor and having that accountability, and I paid them as well. So I had that, you can have a mentor who just speaks casually, but having someone coach you as well. And one of the other things that I, I found to go and rather than having another holiday, um, which a lot of executives do, they go and have a holiday, which is payback, and they're so stressed on the holiday anyway. We take people to, th to a third world destination, in, in, in this case North India, this and do leadership like training. This is a fun holiday. <laughs> which, is, which I didn't think would be fun, but it's life changing. And it's about uh, helping them then um, get some perspective in life mm -hmm. and realising maybe they, there's a philanthropic side to their life and they can actually build that into their purpose for their business. So one of the things we did is we had a company conference in Thailand and I felt so bad because we enjoyed the five star things there and saw so much poverty. So we decided at the next conference to raise money to build an orphanage. Now that changed the nature and the character and the culture of our company to actually give something back rather than just be there for profit. So you've written a book called Enriched, Redefining Wealth. wealth yes. And in this you talk about the concept of half time. Yes. So is that basically don't throw all of your time into the into the one task, try and give yourself balance? Yes, it's it's about finding a purpose for your life and then helping and having your business support that purpose rather than letting your purpose in life take a back seat and in the, in the end you forget about it. And um, yeah, that's really, and it's a bit of my own story in about the third, in the mistakes I've made, um, I've put in there um, and uh, shared those and then said, maybe you can learn from, you know, oh, I was pretty learn dumb. From learn, learn from, from these John's mistakes. mistakes. Yes, well, that's thank right. you very much for coming on the program and um, for everything that you're doing to help give back. My pleasure. Thank you, Heidi. And coming